when bad things happen, there will be people in the name of God, in our name, <clears throat> as people of faith, who will say that this rhythm in life only happens because we are bad and we therefore invite the wrath and the vengefulness of God to come upon us. And therefore, this rhythm that we talk about in life only happens because we have brought it on ourselves. And I say that that's a big bunch of hogwash. Actually, I'd say it's something worse than that, but... But you know, we're in church. That's not the God that we know. The God that we know does not keep a list of rights and wrongs and when we have uh, reached our, our capacity for wrongs for the week, decides to send some tragedy into our lives. That's not the way God works. And it's also true that, um, or rather I should say it's not true, that God sort of set the world into motion and then forgot about us. That's another bit of hogwash that people will spout at times like this. They'll say, well, God doesn't care. And in fact, we have read reports that, that the people who are in Haiti are starting to ask that question. As help does not reach them in time, they start to ask the question that Jesus asked in the garden, have you, have you forsaken us? But we know, we know that God has not forsaken us. We know that God has not forsaken the people of Haiti. We know in our own lives, when we find our lives are shaking and crumbling down around us, that God has not forsaken us. Rather, we know that God loves us so very, very much. We know that as people weep in Haiti, and as people weep in this country, and as people weep around the world, that God weeps with us. We know that God's love for God's people knows no bounds of time or space or circumstance, and that God's love for us is from everlasting to everlasting, as the psalmist says. Even when we have done things for which we ought to be forsaken, God doesn't forsake us. God loves us anyway. Things like, um, things like earthquakes and tsunamis and, um, and hurricanes and tornadoes and slides. Those kind of things raise in us the question of what power God has. You know, if we tend to talk about a God who is all-seeing and all-knowing and all-powerful, what does that mean? What does it mean when the world falls apart? Does that mean that God has lost God's power? There are some people who will tell you yes. I would tell you no, however. I would tell you that, that maybe it is that the kind of power we have given to God, the kind of power we have assigned to God is not the sort of power God has after all. I think that, that in some way, shape, or form, God did set the world into motion that God's hand is at work in creation, but that we are not marionettes on strings. God is not some great puppet master changing in and out scenery and writing the script. I don't believe God causes pain and suffering in our lives, but rather, but rather, the power of God, the power
power of love and of peacemaking, the kind of power that Dr. Martin Luther King spoke about, is alive and at work in you and in me in this world. And in moments like these, in days like these, when we are all in shock about what has happened in, in another part of the world, that the power of God comes alive in our outpouring of love, in our thoughts and in our prayers. And in your life and in my life, when our worlds shake and fall apart, when we become God's community of love for one another, when we make God's love real in this world, that is when God's power is most alive. And so I would invite you today um, to take that one great hour of sharing envelope and to put something in it. To pay attention to the story of the widow's might this morning that, that our offering is not about, uh, it's not about huge gargantuan amounts. It's about the fact that we give what we are able to give. And to know that there are people working on your behalf in Haiti today to remind the people there that God has not forsaken them, that God continues to love them, that God weeps with them. And even though today, today it is still a time for weeping, there will again be a day when it is the time to dance. There will again be a day when it is a time for rejoicing. There will be that day. And on that day, we can share in the power of God's love too. There's a rhythm to it, this life. We have to learn how to join in the dance.